Brian. What's going on, everyone? This is Jacob Shub. You're watching the Tom O'Brien Show. I hope you all have had an okay day. Obviously, we're moving a little bit to the downside right now, and just about uh, everything on my watch list. Obviously, you have some movement up in yields, right? We can take a look here at the 10-year. You're off about 0.37%. I could say probably that might be a part of a reason why it's selling off, but I think as well, there is just such an exuberance to the upside um, coming into election season. And so, you know, we were speaking with Tim Ward yesterday, and he has this vision, uh, at least from his analysis, of pulling back to that 560 level in the SPY. We're trading at 577 right now. The composite off is off about 1.82%. Dow Jones Industrial off about 0.9%, and the SPY off about one8 Zero seven percent. That dollar is still somewhat strong today. This counter trend bounce has been absurd. I would say today, um, even with gold being down, you were off about one point sixteen percent. The fact that gold has been so unbelievably strong with a strong dollar as well um, makes me feel even more bullish on just the gold contract itself. Um, of course, when Tim Ord comes on, he talks more about the miners, but I'm I'm looking at it the base metal, and uh, we're off one point fifteen percent today. Um, but I still think overall that's somewhat of a, of a bullish perspective for gold going forward. Uh, dollar still strong again, up one, up 0.25 percent right now, uh, trading about 104.42. Uh, crude coming back down a little bit. You have the gold contract, as we were saying, off about 1.13 percent. Copper contract off about 1.3 percent, and silver uh, getting hammered down about 3.6 percent, trading at 33.77 on that contract. Apple is off right now. Disney off a little bit, but has been doing a lot better recently, which is nice to see. Uh, General Elect, excuse me, General Electric Aerospace. It was interesting, you know. They had the, this big fall. If we can talk, I guess, some about that. They were having some issues keeping up with demand for some of their jetline engines, um, which traditionally isn't necessarily a bad thing, right? If you're keeping up with demand, if you can't keep up with demand, it must mean a lot of people want your stuff. But the problem is, is they're really just not having an easy time pushing them out, which now when that becomes a long-term uh, issue, uh, you start seeing that get reflected because nobody's getting paid. Um, of course, they're having issues uh, too over at Boeing, and I, and I wonder if this impacts the stock in any significant way or operations in any significant way. I think probably what this is is just kind of, you know, counter trend purchasing off it. This was a pretty big uh, dip. Obviously, some pretty strong volume into it, and so a little bounce on lighter volumes kind of expected with something like that. Lucid off heavily today, uh, down 4.41%. Let's see, Meta off 3.15. It's kind of a tough day. Steel Dynamics, very interesting what it did. You know, that gapped up really jumped out of its usual kind of trading pattern um, up to that 135, then came right back down on it to the upper end of, of the range it was trading in, which was that 125 to 130 area. So nice to see kind of it following, you know, a similar pattern as it always does. Let's talk a little bit about NVIDIA. I had my buddy text me and he aped like so much, uh, you know, cash in NVIDIA. I still think, uh, you know, I still think it's a, it's has a lot of good potential in the company, especially with Blackwell coming out. It's off 3.27% right now as it stands. Uh, so what is that about? Essentially, they had issues with uh, Blackwell, the yield was bad, right? And it was a mistake that they made. TSM is a little bit, I think, salvaged uh, from this since they're so inextricable, at least in the public mind uh, and in the media's mind as well. I guess TSM was actually able uh, to help NVIDIA uh, kind of resolve this. NVIDIA said it was their own problem. It was nothing to do with how TSM uh, was, you know, their, their, their yield process, which is actually pretty bullish. Uh, for TSM, uh, especially since they were able to kind of recover it, even though it wasn't their issue, which is kind of neat. Uh, so it was a glitch after showcasing the chips in March, led to production delays affecting hyperscaler customers. That's going to be things like Meta and uh, Amazon, Google, so on and so forth. Uh, to that point, one of the things that was interesting in this case, so yeah, so last week's report indicated that Amazon and Amazon, Amazon Web Services data centers plan were delayed due to the production issues with NVIDIA's Blackwell chip. Obviously, the yield issue is, is pretty massive. It seems like it's resolved, but if it's already pushing back stuff, um, you know, in a Q1 of 25, uh, that has some issues. And now, 
Amazon itself is creating their own kind of AI chips, right? And this is where this stuff gets kind of weird. And I think it is worth kind of talking about how all this stuff works. You're getting all these different flavors of chips. It's very hard, I think, uh, to keep everything straightened out in your mind, especially when, you know, there are things like, uh, what was it, neural processing units. I mean, like, what does that even mean, right? What, how is that different from a GPU? Uh, Amazon has Tranium. Okay, and that's another question, you know, how is that going to compete? Is it going to compete uh, with Blackwell? And so at least looking at Tranium, you know, one of the questions is, is like, is there a potential for Amazon to actually compete with NVIDIA's GPUs? NVIDIA is still creating GPUs. They're not doing anything specialized, right? I mean, they're getting a lot, a lot better, obviously, especially with Blackwell. It seems like demand for Blackwell is huge. We're still in this era, again, of, of training these large models. These other companies that are creating things like Microsoft, you know what I mean, trying to find their own kind of chips, Amazon with Tranium, Google with their TPUs and stuff like that. These things get developed for special use cases, right? So when you're training large, this is what we've spoken about where, you know, we're, we're seeing this phase already take place with ASML maybe not selling as much, right? Everyone kind of freaked out on the rest of the chip sector, uh, but that was a little bit short-sighted in the sense that we're now just in the phase of really building out these server racks, we're really training these AI models now. So that's where we're kind of in right now. We, we've, we've mobilized, we've gotten all the stuff we need in order to create these chips, and now we're doing stuff uh, with the chips such as training large language models or just training large AIs. That is where NVIDIA's GPUs come in. They can take all those data sets, run that stuff parallel, and uh, it, it's great for training these models. The next step is going to be the inference phase. And this is where you're gonna start asking the AI, and again, we're talking about specialized AI, not large language models like ChatGPT or, or things that we're used to, right? That's all that front-facing stuff. It's the back-end kind of things that are going to, to make a difference, you know, in things like pharmaceutical uh, research and, and things like engineering. Anyways, we'll talk a little bit about that when we get back. I know we're getting into a break. Stay right there.